During an interview with Lex Friedman, the centrist podcaster and friend of Elon Musk, billionaire investor and co-host of Shark Tank, Mark Cuban, made a pretty compelling case why he intends to support President Biden over Donald Trump, and he took the time to debunk a very popular conspiracy theory signal-boosted by Elon Musk and right-wingers about Democrats and undocumented migrants. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, so we're used to eccentric billionaires like Elon Musk uh, having a tendency to favor the right wing of American politics, probably for tax purposes, if not for personal political convictions. Uh, but Mark Cuban is probably the most tolerable billionaire I've ever encountered. He has a really good program, really good business for uh, low cost drugs. Um, again, just great stuff, uh, getting prescription drugs out there for very, very low prices. Um, he also is a frenemy of Elon Musk, emphasis more on enemy, I think, than friend. And they have a lot of high profile back and forth exchanges on Twitter. Elon Musk, of course, is deranged. His political views are terrible. He says he's nonpartisan, but every political comment he makes is favoring the Republican Party, the political right. And during every election cycle that I can think of since 2020, he has openly encouraged people to vote for Republicans. So that's pretty damn partisan. Meanwhile, Mark Cuban has made it abundantly clear that even though he used to be a supporter of Donald Trump, he is no longer and he intends to support President Biden, which brings me to this conversation that he had with Lex Friedman. Now, Lex Friedman is a centrist political podcaster or podcaster, I shouldn't say po political because that's just a fraction of what he covers. Uh, his politics and his interview style are things I don't like because, again, it's way too centrist, uh, very little pushback against deranged guests. Uh, but he asks Mark Cuban about Trump versus Biden, and Mark Cuban has a really good and compelling answer from the perspective of a businessman, um, of the, the owner of companies, and from a capitalist perspective to the extent that that might encourage people who are on the fence about Trump or Biden and may be personally conservative. This is something that they should consider, and it has the added benefit of being a point that I have made before, too, and that's how you know it's right. Take it away, Mark. Well done, Mark. Uh, what's your intuition, if we just stick on Biden and uh -huh. Trump for a sec, uh, what's your intuition why Biden would make a better president than Trump? Look at, if, at the basics, right? If you look at the people he's hired, um, there hasn't been any turnover in his cabinet at all. If you look at the people he's hired um, over the course of his career, or while he was vice president in particular, there's nobody who's turned on him and came out and written books and made public statements about how he's bad for the country. Now compare that to Trump. The people closest to him, almost all of them turn unless there's a financial relationship involved. And to me, that says everything. The dynamics of the team is important to you. When if you you're going to be the most there. powerful person in the world, you better know how to manage and lead. Right? And that that's not to say... Biden hasn't made a, a lot of mistakes. I mean, immigration, the border is a horrific mistake. Um, and hopefully he, he recognizes that. And I don't like the fact that he doesn't admit his mistakes and just say, okay, I got to fix it or I made a mistake in Afghanistan, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. right? The, the position of commander in chief and um, president, you're going to make mistakes. Then I look at the other guy, never miss a mistake. And the list is long. So obviously, I disagree with Mark Cuban with respect to his take on President Biden and the border and Afghanistan. I think President Biden managed the situation in Afghanistan to the best of his ability. Was it perfect? No. But I think the vast majority of that was because, number one, it would be impossible for that withdrawal to have been perfect. Uh, military experts before the withdrawal from Afghanistan, since the withdrawal of Afghanistan, have said that it would be virtually impossible to have a bloodless, painless withdrawal from a country like that under those circumstances. And then the second thing is Donald Trump set those circumstances up in the first place for reasons that we have discussed in video after video after video. We've also talked about the situation at the southern border. President Biden has been relatively draconian at the southern border. I think there's a good argument from the progressive left's perspective that he hasn't distanced himself enough from Trump era policies, though I think he is less cruel at the southern border than Trump. He has deported and incarcerated more people at a higher rate than Donald Trump ever did. And then with respect to just major border reform, that has to come from Congress. And whether or not Mark knows this, the vast majority of 
the complications for border reform in the legislature come from Republicans. It happened in 2013 when Marco Rubio, for political purposes, a Republican senator, killed his own bill because Paul Ryan, the then Speaker of the House, wanted Republicans in both chambers to use it as a wedge issue in the next election. And then Republicans effectively did it the same thing um, in this just this you know few months ago uh, with the bipartisan border bill that uh, Senator Langford, Senator Sinema, and Senator Murphy uh, concocted as well. It was relatively conservative. And yet for pure cynical political reasons, they killed it for Donald Trump because Trump wanted to use it as a wedge issue. That's not Biden's fault. All of that is the Republicans' fault. So I, I don't b- believe in blaming President Biden for the situation at the southern border in terms of the amount of contacts that we see, um, the surge at the southern border, so to speak. But besides all that, again, I think it's a pretty good argument to make. It's one that I've made before, this idea that it says something that Donald Trump's closest advisors, the people who knew him the most intimately from a political perspective because they worked in his White House, either as senior advisors, senior staff, or cabinet officials, so many of them have not only refused to endorse him, they've explicitly said they will not endorse him, right? That is unprecedented. We've talked about this. This is unique to Trump. Biden doesn't have this problem. Obama never had this problem. Bill Clinton never had this problem. Uh, President Bush, a Republican president, President Reagan, a Republican president's prior to Donald Trump never had this problem. This is proof. This is irrefutable, incontrovertible proof that Donald Trump is manifestly unfit for office in ways that no other president is, regardless of their policy perspectives. You have Bill Barr, his attorney general, John Bolton, national security advisor, former transportation secretary Elaine Chao, who's also Mitch McConnell's wife, former defense secretary Mark Esper, uh, Sarah, Alyssa Farrah Griffin, who worked in the White House communications office, former press secretary Nikki Haley, former chief of staff John Kelly, and so on and so forth. We'd have to keep scrolling for days. I think it's an important point that Mark Cuban is emphasizing. And again, he's he's emphasizing it from the perspective of a billionaire capitalist, right? Thinking about running a company, right? The, this idea that if, the, if the, this person's advisors, if their staff, if people who worked for them, if their references are saying, don't hire this guy, which is again, a point that I've made on this channel many times, you probably shouldn't hire them, whereas that's not a problem that Biden has. But I want to play some more from this exchange, too, because then Mark Cuban takes the time to debunk a very popular right wing talking point uh, that has been signal boosted by Lex Friedman's friend, Elon Musk. What do you think about the immigration situation? A lot of conservatives are using that uh, sort of the, the the theory is that the reason it's happening is because they would be able to illegally vote. That's insane. For Biden. Yeah, you can't be an illegal immigrant and vote. And now in a lot of states, because of the conservatives, they've passed laws saying you have to show identification. When I voted in Texas, you had to show you know state identification. They, they can't vote. You can't register as an illegal alien that I'm aware of. To vote. He's right. You can't. It's against federal law for undocumented migrants and non-citizens to vote in this country. It's just simply the case. Now, they'll say, well, okay, fine, they can't vote, but the but President Biden is basically opening the gates at the southern border in order to swell the population of blue states so that it disproportionately advantages them in the House of Representatives with respect to apportionment. But again, that's not true. Number one, right now, <laughs> the House of Representatives is under the control of Republicans, even though the population, generally speaking, of blue states outnumber those of red states. So if that scheme has been in effect since Biden's presidency, it hasn't worked, number one. Number two, um, the Cato Institute, the right-wing libertarian Cato Institute, has debunked this claim with the data at our disposal. David J. Beyer, who is a leading immigrant expert at the Cato Institute, uh, has pointed this out. He's like, red states will that will draw the 2031 maps, excuse me, red states that will draw the 2031 maps are the ones who are benefiting from recent immigration. Increase in GOP states, increase in Dem states. All immigrants versus non-citizens. There are more non-citizens going to red states than blue states and all in more immigrants, period, going to red states than blue states. So based on what we know, the data show that red states are benefiting the most. And from this, from his greater article, the Cato Institute, the data are equally clear. Recent immigration trends are benefiting Republican states where they control the legislature and manage redistricting. About 62% of the 3 million increase in the total immigrant population from March 2019 to March 2023 
has occurred in GOP states, according to the current population survey annual social and economic supplement. The American Community Survey attributes 60% of the growth in the immigrant population to GOP states from July 2019 to July 2022. So these things are relatively consistent. Besides which, again, other fact checkers have debunked this as well. We're migrant. This is from the AFP fact check. The posts make it seem, the post being the conspiracy theories from Elon Musk and others, as if all newly arrived migrants go to states that reliably vote Democratic in national election. But Sullivan said that determining where they end up is actually different. This is referring to an immigration expert. I would say in general, they go where the jobs are. Sullivan said, pointing to states such as North Carolina, which is experiencing a shale oil boom. They often go to places where people speak their language, but there's no monopoly by blue states on having the undocumented. And again, Pew Research has confirmed that uh, based on 2021 data, that the largest number of undocumented workers lived in California, Texas, Florida, and New York. So even between those, it's a relatively uh, relatively even split, and other data suggests that uh, the the vast majority have gone to red states as well. So again, folks, that there's no evidence for this. There's none. There are federal laws preventing undocumented migrants and non citizens from voting in federal elections, and then the the migration data and the immigrant data that we have at our disposal all say that red states are benefiting more than blue states in terms of people going there. So there's no evidence to support this whatsoever. And um, uh, Mark Cuban is correct to point this out because, again, it's a very popular right wing talking point that, you know, when it has Elon Musk behind it is signal boosted to the ends of the earth. So great stuff. I think it's a great endorsement for President Biden, a pretty compelling argument to support him, even though if I disagree with certain details and again, a great debunk of a widely spread conspiracy theory. Let me know what you think in the comments.